Is this you? Your text is appearing behind the player. Your image is being updated every frame, despite not even changing, causing performance issues. The circle you're trying to draw gets overwritten. You have no idea how to use push context and you're scared to even ask? Then this video is for you. In this video, I'll cover how to maximize the use of sprites for everything, how to use push context and lock focus to draw to a sprite, extending sprites into a subclass, and lastly, going through an example of all these concepts with a simple health bar. Let's get right into it. The first question we have to answer is, why sprites? For anything that you draw to the screen, sprites are a good option because one, you can explicitly set the Z index to determine if something gets drawn above or below something else. Two, your game performance can be improved since the sprite only redraws if the image has changed in some way, as opposed to drawing every frame. Three, you get a lot of useful helper functions like moving the sprite, adding and removing it, updating the image, and more. And lastly, four, the sprite code can be self-contained, cleaning up your code and game architecture. How exactly do you draw to a sprite? The most obvious way and one that you're probably most familiar with is by setting the sprite image directly. What you may not know is that you can override the sprite's draw function. The sprite has something called a callback function, which gets called every frame. This function is the draw function. Normally, it would draw whatever the sprite's image is set to, but in this case, we can replace that function implementation with our own. We can use any of the drawing functions, like the line, rect, or circle. You can draw text as well since text is actually a series of images. Let's draw a circle. I'm going to declare a radius of 20. All drawing is done relative to the sprite, as opposed to the screen. So, to the drawing functions, the top left of the sprite is considered to be the coordinates 0, 0. The fill circle at point function takes in an x and y value as the origin of the circle. So we can just pass in the radius as the x and y, since this will make sure the circle stays within the bounds of the sprite. The last parameter is just the radius. If you ran this, you wouldn't see anything since the size of the sprite hasn't been set. When setting an image on a sprite, the size of the sprite is automatically set to the image. In this case, we have to manually do it. We can set the size of the sprite to double the size of the radius to fit the entire circle. I'll move the sprite to the center of the screen. As always, make sure to add the sprite and also call the global sprite update function. Now, we've successfully drawn an image to the sprite. If you change the radius, you'll see that it reflects the change. I encourage you to try drawing other shapes and also multiple things into the sprite to experiment with how it works. However, this comes with one small issue. You're technically dynamically creating a circle every frame, which isn't a big deal, but if it's something more complex, it might have some performance implications. A better solution would be to somehow draw into an image and set a sprite to that image, since whatever image we're creating will only be done a single time. That's what we'll do next. Let's create a new image with the dimensions that we want. Then we can use a special function called push context. What this does is it sets the drawing context to the image passed in. What this means is that anything drawn after the push context gets drawn to the image, not the screen. Let's draw our circle here. In the same way as our last example, this draws relative to the image, not the screen. Then, after you finish drawing, you need to pop the context using pop context to make sure everything else doesn't get drawn to this image as well. This technically isn't syntactically necessary, but it's good practice to indent anything inside a content to make it visually clear. If you're drawing to multiple different images in a row, you may want to use lock focus. This sets the image you're drawing to directly without pushing to the context stack. So you can just lock focus on one image, then lock focus on the next, and so on, before unlocking the focus at the very end. There are definitely way more ways to use push context, but I won't go into that in this video. Now, let's create our sprite with our new image and again move it to the center and add it to the display list. We can see that we get the same result as before, but by only calling the circle drawing function once. Here's a quick code snippet of the same thing, but with text instead, along with adjusting the Z index. Instead of drawing a circle when the context is pushed, you can just draw some text. We can take this further by extending the sprite class into a subclass and creating an isolated component. If you're unfamiliar with object-oriented programming, this might be a bit confusing to you, and I won't be going in depth into this topic, but for starters, you can think of classes as a blueprint for an object, and you can use that class to create multiple instances of that thing. For example, the sprite is its own class, and whenever you create a sprite, you're creating a new instance of a sprite from the original sprite blueprint. I'll be creating an intro into object-oriented programming for the playdate next Monday, so be sure to subscribe to not miss it. Start off by creating a new file. We can create a new class circle that extends the sprite class, and then start off by defining the initialization function. We'll take in the x and y coordinates, as well as the radius of the circle. This next line isn't strictly necessary, but it's good practice so you don't forget to call the parent class function when you're overriding it. You can check to see what this line is actually doing by going to the folder where the Playdate SDK is installed. 
For me, that's in Documents, Playdate SDK. And navigating to the core libs folder and opening up the sprites.lua file. In this case, since we're not passing in an image or a tile map, it just moves the sprite to 0, 0. Back in the init function, we can move the instance of the tile by calling move to on self, and then just copy everything that we did before. You can put the add function here too, or add it manually after instantiating a new circle. We'll do the latter. Back in the main file, import your new circle file. Then you can create a local variable and call the initialization function for the circle class. I'll pass in the coordinates 200, 120 to place the circle in the middle of the screen and give it a radius of 20. Then I'll add the circle to the display list. If we ran this, you'll see that we get the exact same result. However, we can really easily create another instance of the circle. I'll go back and instantiate a second one at a different location and a different radius. And you can see that it appears too. And you can see that I can call any of the normal sprite operations, like moving the sprite again, and it should reflect that as well. Let me finish this off by showing an example of one way you might use this functionality in your game in the form of a health bar. I created a health bar class that extends the sprite class. In the initialization function, I'm setting a max health value. I'm also calling this update health function, where I create a new image and I draw into that image using push context. First, I calculate what percent health I'm at and multiply it by the width of the health bar. Then, I'm dynamically creating a filled rectangle with length proportional to the new health value. I also have a damage function that updates the health accordingly. I've created a new instance of this health bar within the circle class, gave the circle a hitbox, and overrode the update callback function to take player input and move the sprite. I also created a spike class that damages the circle. If I load this up, you can see that the health bar dynamically updates to show the health, and there exist two separate instances of the health bar keeping track of two different health values. I hope this helps you see what you can do with sprites beyond just setting an image to it. If this was helpful, leave a like and subscribe to see new Playdate devlogs and tutorials every Monday. Thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping me make more content like this, and join my Discord community if you want to talk to me or other awesome members. See you next time.